welcome to the inside of the Range Rover Sport SVR facelift. Range Rover Sport SVR, and we're doing some light off-roading, hence the glass. It's only water. It's only water. It's not going to make a mess. I've just taken a bit of a view on how comfortable the ride quality is by seeing how much water gets spilt. What can I tell you about the SVR? It is the fastest Range Rover Sport. It has a large V8. And because it's facelifted, it gets a new infotainment system. Screens top and bottom, like the Range Rover Velar, gets the full suite of on, off-road driving modes. You can put it in uh, grass, gravel, snow. You can put it in all-terrain. You can do it in auto. You can put it in mud and ruts and stuff like that. This is a scientific ride test. I'll help you know. So far, we're doing average. Okay, so far we're doing less than average. I've got comfortable seats. What are the seats in the front like, driver? Very sporty, very sporty. They're quite weird. They've got fixed head restraint. They've got these sort of plastic backs. I don't think you have to have something quite as sporty as this. But it is quite a luxurious place to be. We're going to swap to see what the Porsche Cayenne Turbo is like in the back, if that retains more of its water. Uh, and then actually get away from this off-road stuff, because that's not really what these two cars are about. And welcome to the back of Porsche Cayenne Turbo, which appears to be having slightly more trouble with my glass. Same, same, same speed, same driver, but apparently worse off-road ride, according to the splash test. A slightly less flamboyant interior, but in the 2018 Cayenne Turbo, there is a new massive display at the front, and then this big sort of haptic display slash control panel on the centre console. It's quite a nice place. To be from the back, I've got to say, I've got quite a lot of headroom. I've got loads of legroom, more so than in the SVR. Uh, but I am uh, getting it wetter, so uh, we'll go dry them out and then see what these cars are like uh, on the road. Fast, it really is chucking water everywhere. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Because for all of the off-road goodness, and the KN and the Range Rover Sport are SUVs that do have off-road goodness, it is worth remembering that these are, at this price level, at this performance level, 100 grand, 500 horsepower plus, both of them, road-going machines, aren't they really? That is where you will predominantly find them. There are some people who want an SUV and they think, I definitely want the fastest, I definitely want the most expensive, and the manufacturers of those products are not going to turn around and say, sorry, we're not going to sell you one of those. They say, yeah, you want 550 horsepower? You want 100 grand? Sure, we could do that. So here we are. It is pleasant, the new KN. It has a very wide screen here. I've got lots of digital dials. I admire Porsche's dedication to putting a single analog rev counter right in the middle of the instrument binnacle. I suspect on a KN Turbo, it is not the most important dial people will use. I can flick around and I could get the sat nav screen up on this side, all kinds of things, tire pressure monitors, fluid temperatures, things like that, that's all sensible. And then there's a big speedo in the middle. This sort of new haptic control display on the transmission tunnel is pretty clean and precise. And there's a nice number of dials on the wheel, but it's still a nice round, sensible wheel. Regardless of all that, how does the KN drive? Well, I'll level with you. I thought it's one of these cars that seems, to me, a bit pointless. You know, if you're going to buy a KN, fine, buy a KN. There's lots of sensible versions you can buy. Why on earth do you want a £100,000, 542 horsepower, 560 odd pound foot version? Why do you, why do you need that? I mean, it's a practical, practical family car. And then I got into one in the home counties and I drove it here to Wales, which is 250 miles. Now, I know for overseas North American viewers in particularly, that is not actually very far, is it? But in the UK, you can kind of get from one side to the other in 250 miles or so. And it just massaged those miles away brilliantly. So on air springs, all KN turbos have air springs. This one gets 48 volt uh, adaptive anti-roll bars, so they can stiffen when I go into a corner like that and produce virtually no roll. And then they will slacken in a straight line or indeed off-road. And that means that you get a decent amount of wheel articulation as befits an SUV, and it all melds together very seamlessly. This four litre V8 with two turbos is not the loudest of engines. The old Porsche V8 before it was a more 
aggressive sounding unit. This is quite a smooth sounding V8 engine. Let's have a little listen. <laughs> quite smooth doesn't it? It sounds fairly restrained but there is no denying the speed with which it gets on. No it's not necessarily the most engaging drive, it's not a sports car but it does allow Porsche to build sports cars crucially because the profit margins in these are fast and it also is an incredibly capable car as a large luxury car basically it means you don't have to have an s-class you don't have to have an audi a you don't have to have something that makes you look like you're on an airport taxi run you can just have an suv spend a lot of money on it be very comfortable very relaxed very refined very luxuriated i like it quite a lot whether porsche's take on it is nicer than range rover's take on it is something we will now find out <laughs> So to the Range Rover Sport SVR, revised for 2018, given a mild facelift including a carbon fibre bonnet. If you pay extra, as somebody has for this one, the carbon fibre bonnet stays natural carbon fibre coloured rather than being painted. I don't know why that costs you more, but anyway, it does. I don't know. I mean, I suppose that lightens the weight on the nose and will make a tremendous difference to this 2,300 kilogram. SUV won't it but if you want a performance SUV this is as loud and grunty as they come pretty much maybe one of those jeeps is a bit more tweaked up but this is as bonkers as it gets we get five litre supercharged V8 it has more weight than the KN but it also has more poke than the KN also drives all four wheels through an eight-speed automatic gearbox and it also has different drive modes and so on and so forth the new Velar based I say Velar because it just that's where this dual screen thing came out first so along the top touch screen are things that I'm likely to use most often so the navigation the media telephone some of the settings stuff like that this lower one is meant to deal with things that I don't touch quite so often because it's quite a long glance down to do with it so you could quite easily have a little veer if you're not careful so it's got some vehicle settings it's got the climate control, it's got your heated seats and stuff like that. And then there's a digital instrument panel in the front, which is not quite as attractive, I don't think, as the Porsche one. Driving environment is good. I sit high, as you do in all Range Rovers. I've got a command driving position, so you do sit very tall in a Range Rover. You get an imperious view out. Mirrors are good and large. Sides are quite slabby. So actually, even though this is a big car, it's quite an easy car to place. Inevitably, I don't think it rides quite as comfortably as the KN. I don't know if it is any shorter than a KN, but it certainly feels it. It feels like it turns right about here. So when you turn, it feels incredibly agile. For a car of this size, for a car of this girth, I don't think there is a large non-sports car, not a big coupe. Even some big coupes don't turn as willingly as this does. It is pretty phenomenal. It's got a really quick reaction to the steering. Well, the steering's light and responsive and accurate. It's not nervous, but it really does respond to, to steering movements quickly. So it does have a really dynamic feel, and that is accentuated if I press the exhaust button. It's ridiculous. It's got a proper muscle car soundtrack, and then when you lift off, it's like somebody is having a battle of Waterloo recreation in the boot. It is just ridiculous. You get it the right, the right frame of mind and it just sits and it pops and it bangs for the fun of it. If you want maximum performance feel from an SUV, and there is an argument that some people do, clearly, then the Range Rover SVR is the car for you. I would have one in a slightly less conspicuous colour scheme and finish, I'll be honest. But there is something quite addictive about the powertrain. And there is also something quite addictive about the agility and the way it turns. That's really very cool. It does do amazing things for a car of its size. I always have this slight feeling of 
conspicuousness in a car like this. And the Porsche is a bit more subtle, so if you want something a bit more understated, I think the KN is probably the car for you. And the car for most sensible people is neither. But hey, these cars are not about being sensible. So if you want the least sensible, the wildest, the most intoxicating, quick SUV in the world, I think this is probably it. For videos at least every week, don't forget to subscribe. And we're at autocart.co.uk all the time.